very good everyone. This little class here about working with splines is my new love. Working with splines in Cinema 4D is my new hobby. I hardly model anymore, and I want to bring a bit of that experience to you here. So let's talk about splines, in the simplest way possible, starting from the very beginning. But I want to show you some examples first so you can understand the power of working solely with splines. Look, these scenes that I'm going to show you now are all based on vectors from Illustrator. Those very simple vectors that you go and do your coloring. We are here working with splines and extrude, which are two really cool combinations for us to enjoy here in Cinema 4D. I will translate here some examples of how to work with splines. Here is a mural for Mercurial. We have the extrude here and the paths that I will even move around. Look, there is one vector here and another little vector here as well. See how quick and simple it is to work with this tool. Here's another option. I made this logo for this mural, right, for PFL, which is the secondary league before the UFC. Ah, this one is not in Octane. This one is in Redshift. Look at that. Just to say that the course is really going to be a hybrid course. Let's see if Redshift is working here already. Oh, it's Redshift here. This one is going to be really cool ta, to give you a preview so you can see. So everything here is assembled, built with vectors. It's very common to receive a request from the agency or from your studio or from your boss to, hey man, can you create a 3D logo for me based on a little vector? Instead of modeling it, you can use the spline method with the instruction, which is really cool. I wonder if my redshift will still let me down. Look, it showed up. Very cool. I also did this work here in redshift. And I'm not that skilled yet in redshift. Since I'm the expert in Octane, look at that. I'm already getting some cool results to work with. So I also built this entire scene with splines, right? This part of the logo, including the center, is all made with little vectors exported from Illustrator to Cinema 4D. Shall we continue our journey here in the world of splines? I have this logo again here. I think I don't even have a shader on it. Let's take a look. I don't even have a shader on it here, so let's check. It should be in uh, Octane. Let's go to Octane now. We will always be switching here between rendering engines so we can work in the course. Look. It has depth of field in the scene. It has depth of field in the scene. Let me click here on my little camera tag. And let's go to Universal, Depth of Field. And let's go to Aperture and turn it off. It's zero. Let's see if my uh, 3D mouse is working. It's working. So here is another project where I explore a lot of the issue. Actually, it's the same project I showed earlier, but here, it's just the logo, right? It's amazing how you can achieve a wealth of details using spline work combined with extrusion. If you want these mini layers in the middle, you can bring more details to the logo or piece, and you don't need to have almost any energy savings. In fact, it's a waste of energy doing traditional modeling. Where's my light? It seems like there's no light in this scene. Can you turn off the light, please? Let me... See here, look, we have more light here. Oh, wonderful. So let's go from the very beginning so we can see how it works. There's one more here. Oh my God, I love, uh, love, love this. Well, let's start by making the little room. Now I'm going to give a big lift, big lift, big lift. Let me see how it goes, a little disappearance here and there. We go, now we are comfortable here in our little room to start. Well, I work with vectors, right? I can use here. Actually, I'm going to use the native vectors of Cinema 4D to explain how the perfect combination works. I'm going to take a circle here, and it is a vector, right? It is also a procedural vector. The parametric vector has parameters just like these objects here also have parameters you can change, right? Each one has its own algorithm, and here I'm going to use our little vector with an extrusion. The extrusion is here, in this extrude section, right? If you can't find it here, always remember the shortcut key, Shift C, so you can search exactly for the tool that I'm talking about, guiding you, my dear friend, to the circular extrusion, and then you'll see what happens. So there is the extrusion, right? I have a bit of faceting on my vector, because besides the extrusion, we have 
to remember that the vector is an object that contains data and here I can set a slightly better resolution, right? Here are some types of point distribution. I'm going to use the adaptive one. The smaller the degree here, the smoother the vectors will be, making them more smooth. So let's go, I have here in the extrusion. Let's remove our dear friend work plane again so it doesn't interfere with our viewport. And here's the thing, in the extrusion, I have this tab, which I consider a milestone in the history of Maxon, as they enabled us with some spline systems. Actually caps with splines. I'm going to bring it here faster before doing it manually. I'll take one of these examples here, half, circle. It creates it for us there, through this spline. Do you see here? I will even control it for you to see that I'm adjusting it there at the edge. It creates for us in a procedural way, based on our little vector, a border, or drawing layer there, which we can, I don't know how we can call this here, right? But it is a way to add more detail to the scene. This helps a lot in the creation of logos. It helps a lot in the creation of panels, murals, and the logos that we wanted. In 3D, the more details you have in the scene, the more these micro details contribute to the visual richness. So I have here some of these presets that I love. I always enjoy working from one of them. Let's click on this guy here. Go to shine and look how it changes. The graph here as well. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit so you can see it up close. Look how it draws exactly from here. This drawing that we are seeing here. It applies it here. See how nice it looks. So it's really cool to start maybe with the processes down here and you can save what you create, right? This one is really nice. You can make it flatten or stretch, creating all sorts of crazy shapes. Look at that. You can really explore here. You can create various templates. What do I do? I come here and save for E7 when I think it's looking good. Then I put logo one there and leave it saved here. And the next time I load for E7, my logo one will be there. The big famous logo one, which will earn me the prize of I don't know what, but here's the thing. Let's continue exploring the vectors. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new tool called Spline Mask. When I want to work with two or more vectors, I want to make, for example, this circle. I'm going to duplicate it in the following way. I'm going to click here on the circle and hold down CTRL while dragging. It will duplicate for me anywhere I drop it here. The circle has been duplicated in the scene. Now, cool. When I want two vector objects to interact, I use a tool called Spline Mask. So Shift C, Spline Mask, and we will have this new little guy here, our new beloved Spline Mask, which also works in the vector family. You can place the two vectors you want to work together underneath this guy here, and from now on, it executes the command. You can already see that it has created a union between the vectors, right? So here, there was a union between the vectors because I am using the spline mask. It has some modes, right? The default standard mode is union. Unity is strength. Man, now we will change it to subtract A from B. And you can see that it created a crescent shape, making it almost like a Boolean C. So when I turn on my extrusion, will it work if I place this underneath the extrusion? Look, so he makes the outline based on our beloved drawing there. I'm even going to change this extrusion of mine over here. And I'm going to change its operation from B to A. So he made the swap, one for the other. And now I have two objects in the scene. Look, let's bring it a little closer. It's very fast. It's very agile to work this way. Here, my friends, I'm going to show you this logo, which is a very complex logo, right? Technically, how it was created, based on the vectors. Let's analyze it piece by piece. It's the Seahawks logo. They say it's the Corinthians of the United States. Is that really true? These guys say that only troublemakers support this team here. Look, let's, well, this project is one of the ones I'm going to bring here. It didn't make it to the finals of this project. I only use it to make the previews, right? So it didn't end up being in the final teams and was never posted anywhere. So I'm using this to, to record a class and it's one of the things I always want to bring up this issue of semiotics. You will always see this CBS logo here as 
it will always be present in the pieces I bring of this type of joy you, which will be really cool. But I want to focus here on this logo. Let's do a Cattrall C on it and then Cattrall N to generate a new scene and Cattrall V to paste our logo. Look how he came in then. How can we separate it? Over at Loose Treater, right? You can separate it. Let's turn off all the extrusions here. So he came here with several layers only. If the outer layer is like an outline, then in Illustrator, you can separate that outer layer, which will become an extrusion layer. Let me separate it from the scene here so we can see it better. And these micro details, which are the nozzle and the eye, note that each of them has a separate vector, even duplicated to create a depth effect. So the more you can separate it, as if it were a machine, like assembling those Lego pieces, fitting into each other, the easier it becomes to create the extrusions and use this really cool method. It's time for the 4D extrusion, man. Now I'm all confused. Where's my thing? It was here. I needed you back in the scene, dude. Look how cool it looks. Let's do an NB here, or NQ. I make the textures disappear from the scene. I think I ended up unlocking something here out of place. No, it wasn't that. So let's see how this extrusion was made. This extrusion is a very classic one that we use, which has this crease that is quite absent. See? This crease. It almost doesn't cause technical problems. That's why we use it a lot. It hardly has any crease. There are no mistakes. So let's take a look at your setup, how it is here. Well, we are going to use this round version. The extrusion part is turned off. I'll turn it back on here so we can see. See, let me turn it off. Look at how much height it has, right? I could adjust the tension here, but then it would cause the tension at these vertices to make it bend. And that's not what I want. I want the extrusion to match the uh, amount of height that I have available. So it's very good to enable this function. Very cool. Well, here in subdivision, if I increase it, I can even check the artifacts it will create here. Let's see. It may hold the consistency a bit longer. But look, when you give it a total size, it will always reach that limit of the logo and get stuck there. Sometimes I use one here to make it super rigid or I add a subdivision to smooth it out depending on the logo. Super simple as well. But the point here is that the more details you have in the vector export, the better the final result will be. Look how nice it turned out. Now here guys, look at this cool example of the logo of the mid team Vikings. Is that it? The American football team here? Let's note how we did the extrusion for each of them. So here I go to the helmet and look, there is only one subdivision, just one. This one is much easier to control when you have few subdivisions. I'll click down here, also one, also one. Look at the setup. So here I have the tension at 100%, but I can't change it because I have the extrusion enabled. This affects the offset, the height I want for bevels maybe in my scene or for shadows and light. This really interferes with shadows and light. It's one of the cool features to work with on this little guy here. So here's another example of how you can separate the vectors and then export them. Let's delete them one by one so we can see. Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, 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 this. There is just one giant shape plus an external shape with an outline and an outline here. Let's work on this now. How does it work? Let's take another Z, 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 this texture stands out on the screen and then you can have impressive results at very low operating costs. 
Look how cool this is everyone. So that's it. In the next class, we're going to get our hands dirty to create our 3D logo. Let's download it directly from the site. We'll study it piece by piece and see how it works. A kiss from base and see you in the next class. I'm out.